How often does that happen where maybe you see a guy in practice and then you see something in a game that you didn't even know he had necessarily? Not very often. You know, we, uh, we saw it. We saw that he could take that fourth step, stick it in the ground, and slam it up in between the tackles and grind out the six, seven yarder, maybe turn it into, you know, 16, 17. Um, we hadn't seen, but, you know, we don't do a lot of live work. So um, we didn't see the pop of 75 yards, you know, anywhere leading up to that moment. Um, it was great to see that burst. You know, our guys don't open up like that in practice very often. And it was good to see him run away from those guys because it told us that he had that extra gear. And, and as we found out, you know, especially through our screen game and putting the ball in his hands, he was able to make a lot of explosive plays. What do you like about Jaden Nixon? Wiggle. <laughs> He's pretty twitchy. He's a great kid, super smart, um, loves football, and he'll make you miss. So he's different than, you know, Dom. Dom's going to try and go through your face, and, and uh, you know, Nixon's going to try and make you miss in a phone booth, which you can do. What do, you, what do you like about John Paul Richardson? What you see? What would you see in him <laughs> that other people didn't see? I, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, he's got a lot of moxie. His dad, you know, Bucky Richardson, obviously grew up, he grew up in a football uh, family, so it's second nature to him. He's got this unbelievable FBI football IQ, and uh, he just does all the right things. You know, we kind of kid him about being the accountant. I think it's the kid from the Raiders that's making all those plays play to Clemson, you know, and very similar, just in the right position, does the right things, never makes a mistake, MA-wise, missed assignments, and when we throw him the football, he catches that. I think he was 25 for 25 last year, and uh, he won our catch ratio competition that we have a receiver. It's hard to beat 100%, you know, so he's just a guy that produces, and, uh, and he loves to compete, you know, and he'll talk a bunch of crap, too, so <laughs> it's fun working with the team. Do you anticipate with him and Brendan going more four receiver sets this year? Um, yeah, I think so. You know, I think it helps Spencer to spread it out, to give him some lanes in there. Um, we, If people want to try and pressure us and we're opened up in sets, I think Spencer can make, you know, somebody miss. He'll make the first guy miss, and then who's home from there? Um, so to play it a little bit spaced out, I think, plays into Spencer's uh, strengths. Um, and we've got the slots to do it, and we've got the depth at slot to do it. Um, so I think so, but at the same time, you know, Blaine's a really good player, and we've got some tight ends that are that are making a difference. And, um, you know, they're going to be on the field, and it helps our run game. So it's a fine line between, you know, do we spread this thing out and give Spencer some running lanes, or do we maybe pack in a little bit with the tight end, open up the run game for the tailback, read zone game, that, that type of thing. Does Blaine kind of change how you use those tight ends at all? For sure, he's a, yeah. he's a receiver, he's a converted receiver. Mm -hmm. And uh, for him to kick inside like that, be able to block somebody, but then run a route like a mm -hmm. wideout, is, he's a huge weapon for us. What was that What was that conversation like with switching him? He, he split time, obviously, last year, but now it's listed on the roster was, and all that stuff. It was stuff. a different one because, you know, he came in as a receiver and was recruited as a receiver. Um, and then all of a sudden he finds himself at 225 pounds and he's a biscuit away from tight end, you know. And, <laughs> and, and, and so we talked to him about it, and, and he was – receptive but at the same time a little bit hesitant you know um, and then we got him in the TCU game and all of a sudden he's catching the ball making plays making a difference for us the offense is clicking you know like you want it to and he was a huge part of that um, so he kind of bought into it more after that moment and then we shifted in that direction as the season went on just more and more snaps there and then he just moved into the tight end role in the spring so it was a process I mean, it took a while what have you seen or what have you liked from him making that full transition now to Kelvin with that? Oh, man, a lot of things, you know, because he's physical. He'll hit you, you know, so he's not a he's not a liability when we're running the ball. He's not a liability in protection, which typically when you have a pass-catching tight end, they are. You know, you're like, oh, man, I don't know if he's going to hold up here. I don't know if he'll be able to block back on a split-flow zone play and, and block the backside defensive end. But he can do both of those things, and then he can shift out and go run routes like a like JP and Brennan and those guys. So um, there's a lot to like with him. Yeah, good play. Okay. You grow the same from those guys as you're trying to build down. Um, you know, there's a lot of talent in there. Um, we have some transfers that have come in. Uh, we have some JC guys that are, that are here too. Um, and they're all really talented and athletic. So it's just a matter of time. Um, you know, it's the same thing with those guys. We got a bunch of athletic wideouts last year that are would love to have make a bunch of plays for us last year, but I mean, it's just a process. And I think we're on that road right now with those big dogs, and we're definitely deeper. Uh, you know, it's, we, can, we can 
you know, sustain an injury and, and be able to step the next guy up, next man up mentality um, and, and fill the void and he'll be ready to go. Um, I so I think we're in pretty good shape. Sorry. I know this time of year is all about football, X's and O's, but the fact that you and Derek in the coordinator spots being black coordinators, do you guys talk about that? Is there a significance there for, I mean, I know there is for you individually and for him, I ask him about that too, but for the program more extensively and college football maybe even? I don't, I don't know if I've thought about it like that, okay. um, but you know, from time to time, Derek and I will talk, you know, and, and just he'll give me his insight on his path because obviously I've not been a head football coach and he has, so you know I'm all ears when, when he's talking about, you know, the challenges that he had in, in trying to get there, and, and uh, you know I'm sure he wants to be a head football coach again, and um, so we've had discussions, um, but it's not like we're carrying the torch for, for everybody. I mean, it's not something like that. We don't see it like that. Um, see, there's a couple guys, you know, that are doing their job. I mean, I stepped into my position because of the opening here, and I've been here a long time. And probably nobody knew the offense better than myself, you know, for this opportunity. And, and Derek has, has been an accomplished defensive coordinator and, and certainly could be a, a great asset to our program with some of the ideas that he can bring in from Vanderbilt. Um, so it just so happens, timing, we're here at the same time. Um, and uh, hopefully do a good job. He said a lot of it is just do your job, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of take your background out of it in a way is that sort of how you've seen your what you do whether it's yeah. as a coordinator or an assistant or whatever for sure yeah. you know i mean i didn't get this job because i'm a minority sure. you know um got it because i've been here for a long time with my gun at least that's how i want to think about it um you know and i'm sure Derek, same thing you know i mean the guy's got a hell of a resume he's top 10 defense coordinator in the country i'm sure um so for for coach to be able to hire Derek's, you know been great you know, I think I think it's a really good thing though. I think we're headed in the right direction. You know, when you look around through the Big Twelve, I I think we might be the only two, and we're on the same team. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I think that bodes well for the program. I wanted to ask one thing about his defense. He said you all have been keeping it pretty, like they've been keeping it pretty base, but he could see some of those edge rushers, those hybrid guys, maybe you know being in that linebacker spot as the season goes on. You as a on the other side of things, potentially seeing that. What would that look like for offenses in the Big 12 potentially facing? Get the ball out now. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you don't want to stand back there and rub it. No teddy bears, you know. <laughs> so, um, no, that's a nightmare. I mean, because yeah, they've got a bunch of guys on that side of the ball that can go storm the passer. Um, you know, so you got to try and mitigate the, the damage and, and throw it at the right times and make sure you're putting the right guys in the right guys. And, and uh, it's, it's a scary proposition to think you're going to be able to just drop back and throw it all over the yard against against that edge team, um, against ourselves. So it's good practice. I mean, our guys are seeing as good as we're going to see all year long. So it's really good practice for, you know, Caleb and our tackles. Mike keeps using the word magician when referring to Spencer. What kind of steps have you seen him take this offseason? Um, leadership, uh, far and away. I mean, he's, he's the guy, you know, and, and uh, our team leans on him right now for leadership and getting everybody motivated and bringing them all up and getting a break and all the things that you want from your quarterback he's delivering that right now um, and on and off the field so uh, that's the biggest thing you know coach call him magician all he wants to but for me it's it's how he's impacting the rest of the group you know because if you have a if your quarterback goes ah and just kind of does that thing then it's <clears throat> so much harder to get the rest of the group rallied if your quarterback says hey man get in the saddle let's go and now all of a sudden he becomes my voice, it makes a huge difference. It's not all on me. And, and he becomes that guy that takes the ownership of it, which is what he's done. Um, so it's a lot less pressure on us as a staff to try and motivate. Um, and, and I think it's far better. It's a far better situation for our players too. We're not always chirping and getting in their ear. You know, They take it from Spencer better than they're gonna take it from myself. The, Go ahead. You may have been asked this, but the guys behind him, Garrett and Gunner and even Gavin, kind of. What's your comfort level there, and what have you seen from those guys? I think they're better. You know, they've they've made a, a big leap from what we saw in spring ball. I'm glad that Garrett was here and was able to come in and come in in January and, and uh, take some snaps in spring ball, um, and then be here through the summer and have an idea of what's going on because a lot of guys come in in the summer and try and catch up then, and it's so hard to do because the coaches aren't out there. Um, but if you come in in January like he did. 
work with coach class, go through spring ball, get yelled at by Tim or Tay, get yelled at by me. I mean, see it all up on the table. Here's the expectation. This is how we want the play run. Well, when you get there in July, in June or July, and you're on your own, you can police yourself. You know, you can hold yourself accountable for how we want to run it. Um, and both of those guys, you know, look at the game that way. You know, Garrett's done a really good job of, of bringing in the plays right away and, and taking charge like a quarterback should. And, and Gunner has made great strides, um, you know, with decision making and where he's going with the football. So, very happy where our twos are right now. Mm -hmm. I just don't know again when it's game day. You know, I, if 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 we can get a chance to get up and get those guys out on the field, that would be a godsend for us. You know, yeah. to be able to get those guys some live action. Then all of a sudden, it's a breath of uh, fresh air, relax, relaxation for me. Gunner talked the other day that he kind of had to win some teammates over. How have you kind of seen him? win guys over and kind of find a comfort level himself? You know, I don't, I don't know if, if, I mean, maybe that's how I felt. I don't, yeah. I didn't feel that, mm -hmm. you know, because he's a great kid. And what I'm saying, a great, he's a great mm -hmm. kid. Smiling all the time, loves to be out here, loves football, hang out with the teammates. I don't know that he had to work at anything like mm -hmm. that. I don't think he had to overcome something like that, you know, um, obviously with the head man being his dad. Um, yeah. But uh, no, I, I don't, you know, if that's how he feels, okay, yeah. that, ask that I question. I think it was the head man thing, kind of. But for thing, me, I don't, I, yeah. don't, I don't see it. I don't mm -hmm. see it. You know, I think he's just done a good job of, I shouldn't, shouldn't even say it's a good job. He's one of the guys, and mm -hmm. that's just what it is. So, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything really to overcome. Yeah. You know, it's difficult. I get yeah. it. Quarterback is, is a spot that's certainly on everybody's radar. You know, it's, it's a highlighted spot. And then your dad being the HBC, I mean, that mm -hmm. just compounds things. But, but mm -hmm. um, I haven't felt it. Not from our kids. The, I, I'm not. I don't. I don't want to ask you to tell me who your starting receivers are. But do you have a sense of how many receivers you could potentially be comfortable playing in a game, running in and out of there? Um. Eight. Okay. Probably. Probably everybody that gets on the bus. Are Are we likely to look at the roster and know the eight, or is there any surprises there? <laughs> <laughs> no, you'll you'll know the eight. Um, some of the young guys that are, that are showing up, you know, uh, Stephon Johnson. Um, he's had, he's had a good camp so far. I mean, he's he's a surprise, and you know he might slide into maybe getting himself on the bus. I'm not saying he's going to make a dent in in our production this year, but um, there are plenty of guys for that. I mean, shoot, Jaden looks good, Braden Johnson looks good, and BP and JP and Braylon Presley looks good. Um, you know, and Rashad Owens looks good. I mean, they're all playing pretty well right now. Now the thing is, and I told him the other day, I mean, there isn't we don't have as of right now. Tylen Wallace in the room, or Justin Blackman, or James Washington, somebody, Tay Martin, at the end of the day. Now, we didn't have Tay as Tay was in the beginning of last year either. You know, he's an unproven commodity. But at the end of the year, halfway through the year, we knew that we had Tay. We could rely on throwing it that direction uh, in critical situations. So somebody's got to take, take that role. Somebody's got to move into that role of throw it to me on third and eight. What, what's the importance of that guy in your mind? Oh, man, it's huge. It's huge. It's a huge comfort level for me as a play caller and probably bigger for Spencer as, okay, here's my security blanket. You know, I know that if I throw that direction, odds are 75% it's going to be complete. You know, so it's a big deal. Yeah. What all can you do with a guy like Braylon? A lot. You know, he's a, he's a hiccup. I mean, he really is super quick. Um, we've got to find a way to put the ball in his hands. I think he's, I mean, there's a chance he plays this year, you know, similar obviously with Brennan. So, we're not going um, outside of the box on trying to create plays different for inside receivers than we would for normally for Brennan and JP. So he would fit into that role. Um, but we're not going to probably design a bunch of things for him either. We've got some pretty talented guys in there, and I want to bring them along slowly. You know, he's not he's not going to make a huge impact, I wouldn't think, right away, um, just because of the talent level that we have there now. And then now, what kind of steps has Talon taken since the spring until, until now? Talon's been nicked up a little bit, so he's still just kind of trying to work back in a situation. I'd love to get him back out there full speed right away. You know, he started off in the beginning of camp and, and looked good and then was slowed a little bit again, you know, and got, you know, he hurt his ankle in the spring game. And, um, you know, he's kind of just been recovering from that. Um, he's going to be a great player here, no doubt in my mind. It's just, it's just a matter of time, it's when. You know, it's hard to play somebody that hasn't taken a ton of snaps, you know. And you got a, a guy like Braden Johnson and, and, and Jaden Bray in front of him, guys like him, those guys in front of him, it just makes it harder, you know, for a young guy to come in and make a play. So 
time, but I've seen a lot of good things. With those young receivers, with, with those young receivers.